Hello guys. In this video, we'll be learning another interesting topic inside functions called functions are first class citizens. See here what I have written, I will tell you. But before that, uh, let me show you one actually uh, link. You can So here you can see I have added one link. This is a Wikipedia link and this is about actually first class citizens. Now if I open this particular link, so it will redirect to this particular page. Now here you can see in a given programming language design, a first class citizens is an entity which supports all the operations generally available to other entities. These operations typically include being passed um, an argument to a function, written from a function and assigned to a variable. That means in programming, that means in Python, whatever let's say data type you have learned, let's say uh, integer, float, string, okay, then boolean, everything is a first class citizen because these are the data type can perform all the operations like you can give as a argument in a function you can return these are the data type from a function you can perform different different operations okay so these are the things actually you can perform that is why we call it as a first class citizen okay but in python functions also can be considered as a first class citizen because with the help of function you can perform all the operations like you can like you can check a type of a function you can check the id of a function you can pass the function as an input to another function that means you can passes an argument you can return that particular function okay so all kinds of operation can be performed with the help of function as well inside python which is not available in other programming languages okay so this particular concept is very uh, interesting even i also enjoyed this particular concept a lot when i learned this particular concept so uh, let me show you some of the example i think then this particular uh, concept will be more clear so uh, see as of now we saw like different different data type let's say if i write a is equal to 2 so this is my integer type data type. Now what I can do, I can check the type of this particular data. I'll just use this particular type function inside that if I pass A. So it will tell me it's an integer type data. Okay. You can also check the ID like in memory location in which ID actually it is occupying. You can also check that particular memory location. Okay. Everything is possible. See, whatever things we learned with respect to other data type. Okay. Let's say integer, float, boolean, string and so on. Right. All the operations can be performed on top of the function as well. Let me show you. So let's say here I will define a function. Uh, let's say I'll define a function. I'll just name it as a square. Okay. So it will take one number and it will perform the square operation. So I'll just return uh, number square of two. Okay. Now if I execute, it's working fine. Now let's say I want to check the type of this particular function. I can use the same concept. I'll use the type function inside that. I'll only pass this particular function name okay you can see the function name is square now if i execute the program you'll see that it will tell me the type of the function is a function okay it's a function type data okay it's a function type data even you you can also check the id okay you can also check the id so let me print i think that would be better now inside id i will pass my uh, function name it will also print the specific id actually it is occupying in the memory that means what are the operation used to perform in uh, other type data you can uh, perform the same actually operations on top of the function as well that's why function is calling first class citizens okay first class citizens inside python okay like other data type so this uh, concept is not available in other programming language but in python it is possible fine so here function can be used as a first class citizens fine now let me show you some more example let's say so let's say I can reassign any kinds of value. Let's say if I just write a is equal to uh, 3. So what I will do, I'll just write b is equal to a. Fine. Now if I print this particular b, you will see that uh, 3 would be printed because here I have reassigned this particular variable in this particular variable. Okay. So this concept also can be used in a function as well. Let me show you. So what I will do, I'll just take a variable called x and now I'm going to call this particular function. Okay. Square. This function I will call here now let's say if i give any kinds of input here so it will give return me the uh it will return me that particular square of that particular number let's say if i give four now if i print this particular x so it will return me 16 now instead of that what i can do i'll just simply write um, x is equal to square okay x is equal to square now if i execute see it will work fine okay it will work fine now if i show you this particular id of x now see the same id okay the same id it is locating that means this particular function i can reassign in any other variable okay it is possible now i can if i if i want to let's say perform the operation the square operation i can do like that i'll just write x and inside x actually i'm going to pass one number let's say four now if i execute it will give me 16 that means now x has become your function okay function object and now what uh, what are the operation used to perform with this square same operation you can perform with the help of x as well 
I hope this is clear, right? Now you can also delete a function object. Let's say if I just use this particular del keyword. Now if I just mention the square, okay, square. Now if I print the square, see, it will tell me square is not defined because the square is already deleted here. Okay, square object is already deleted. I hope you got it, right? So the same uh, operation actually we used to also perform with other type data as well. I think remember we perform in list type, tuple type, okay, then dictionary sets, okay, everything we have learned. You can also store the function in any other data type as well. Let me show you. So first of all, I will execute this particular function because I deleted the object, right? So let me re-execute. Now if I come here, now see, let's say there is a list I'm having. Let's say inside list I'm having some value. Fine. Now I'm also uh, storing this particular square function. Okay, this particular square function object inside this particular list. Now if I execute, see it's working fine. Now if I print the L, let me show you if I print the L, it is also printing this particular items. You can see the last item is it is nothing but it's a function object. Okay, function function object I I have stored. Now let's say I want to access this particular object. What I can do, I can use the negative indexing minus one, and it will return me the function object only. Now let's say I want to perform the square root operation. What I will do? I'll just give the input. Let's say I'll give the input, let's say four, it will return me 16. Okay. So that's how so you can use this particular function. Okay. You can also store it here. Now you can ask me, uh, function is a mutable or immutable object. See, uh, to check these particular things, you can use one easy approach. So just try to define a uh, sets. I think you know set only takes the immutable objects. Okay. Not the mutable objects. Now if I give this particular square function object here, now if I execute, uh, first of all, let me print. If I execute, see, it's working. It's working means, that means it's a immutable object. Okay, it's not a mutable object. So always try to remember function is a immutable object, not a mutable object. Okay, it's a immutable data type. You can also return a function, okay, from another function. Let me show you another example. Let's say, I'll just write a function. Let's say function name is f. So inside that, I'm going to create another function. Let's say G. Now this particular G function will take two input A comma B. So two parameter it will take. Now I'll just simply return A plus B operation. Okay. Now here I'm going to return this particular function. Let's say G. Fine. So here you can see I'm returning this particular function object. Okay. G of G returning. That means I'm returning the function object here. Now simply uh, what I will do. I'll just write a, I'll just take a variable. And now I'm going to call this particular function F. Okay. See, now if I execute the program, what will happen? Uh, in the variable, this particular function object will come. Let me show you if I print the variable right now. See, the, it is returning this particular function g. Now what I can do simply, I can just write like that. Let's say val, okay, val. Now I can give the input, let's say two comma four. Now if I execute, it will give me seven. Okay, because it is doing this particular operation and I'm returning this particular function object here. Instead of writing like that, you can also write in just one line. See, uh, here I'm getting the object now. I'll just give the input here. So let's say uh, 2 comma 3, I'll give. It will give me. Uh, okay, so I also need to print this particular val. Okay, now I'll give the. Now here I will get the 5. So that's how you can also return a function. Okay, uh, from another function. It is also possible. This is called returning a function. You can also take the function as an argument. Let me show you another example. So I already written the code. Let me show you. So here I have defined two function, function A. Inside that I've just written inside of function A. Then I've taken another function called function B. Okay, this particular function will take an, one parameter called Z. Now inside that I've just written uh, inside function C. Now it is returning this particular Z, you can see. Okay, it is returning this particular Z. Now see what is happening. I'm calling this particular function here, you can see. And inside this function, I'm giving another function object. I'm passing another function object as an argument. Okay, as an argument I'm passing. That means what is happening? I'm executing this particular B function. First of all, it will print. Let me execute. See what will happen. First of all, it will print inside function C. Okay, inside function C. Then it is returning. Okay, it is returning function Z. And in, inside function Z, what you are passing? Function A. That means function A will getting call. Okay, that means it will print inside function A. In, inside function A. Okay. And it is not returning anything. Okay, it is not returning anything. That's why it will return none. I hope this is clear. Okay. So that's how actually you can also use function as an argument. It is also possible. Okay. So that's why we call this particular uh, function as a first class citizen inside Python. Uh, so that you can use this particular function like other type data. Okay. It is possible here. So this is another super important concept. I just wanted to let you know. I hope you enjoyed. So thank you so much for watching this particular video and I will see you next time.